Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review, and in fact a bonus review for my Marines theme month in preparation for my 1986 Sergeant Slaughter and his Triple T vehicle review. I'll be taking a look at the previous version of Sergeant Slaughter, the mail-away version of Sergeant Slaughter. Now, in the mid-80s, when G.I. Joe was at its very peak, Hasbro was looking for a live-action spokesperson for the line to help it continue on. And they got Robert Remus, better known the world over as professional wrestler, Sergeant Slaughter. Now, these were advertised on action figure packages and vehicle and playset packages with a little indicator. And on the inside, you got these coupons. And these coupons were basically only worth uh, one point. You have to have collected about five of these. This was actually unusual at the time because many other mail away offers that Hasbro's G.I. Joe line offered asked you for these flag points. Now, these flag points differed in value depending on whether you had a figure a playset or a vehicle depending on its size. Not with these. These were only one and you have to collect all five of them. Now, if you couldn't collect all five of them, you could collect four of them and call in a special number and you would get, be given a, a special code to write down on one of your, um, one of the four, I suppose, coupons and hand that in as a virtual fifth coupon. I know some people actually tend to think of uh, Sergeant Slaughter as a late 1985 figure and in fact that's it's reasonable to call him that even though I personally think he's a 1986 figure. Um, the live action commercials for the distribution of the mail away figure were documented as being released in or aired in, 19, in 1985. And in fact, packages like this one are actually 1985 packages re-released in 1986. But sometimes these would be released in late 1985 and would still have the uh, Sergeant Slaughter indicator and of course a coupon on the inside. I believe it's also possible that collectors might think of Sergeant Slaughter as uh, being a 1985 figure because Hasbro was negotiating the contract with Sergeant Slaughter well before the figure was produced in 1986. As a matter of fact, one of the possible hiccups in that contract was Sergeant Slaughter's move from the WWF in 1985 to the AWA in that same year. The AWA has quite a bit to uh, looser licensing contracts for their um, character visages and names, I suppose you can read into that as any way you will. In this first version of the Sergeant Slaughter figure, with his G.I. Joe logo and stripes down the side of his pants and the uh, chevrons, sergeant stripes on his boots and the big red, white, and blue USA on his chest, you would think that this is how he would have appeared in the cartoon. But no, he didn't appear this way in the cartoon or in the comic book. As a matter of fact, the uniform is quite a bit uh, closer in its color scheme to how he was uh, in his live-action appearances for the G.I. Joe cartoon. Oddly enough, in advertisements and even on his file card, it's never specifically stated that he's a Marine. However, there are a few uh, hints for that. As you can see on the official card art, which again doesn't quite match the color scheme of the production figure, you can see on his campaign hat that he has a Marine Corps logo. And within the file card, there is of course mention of Paris Island and Camp Lejeune and Pendleton, all of which are Marine training bases. Of course, we lost the Marine logo on his production hat, but there it is on his belt buckle. And in fact, the white belt is part of 
a Marine dress blues uniform. Sergeant Sauter comes with a single accessory, a very easily losable accessory at that, his marching stick, or uh, most collectors call a baton. Now, when Sergeant Sauter was first released as a mail-away, not only did you get the figure and, of course, the file card, but you also got something of a unique little uh, flyer here, which only came with the early versions of uh, receiving uh, Sergeant Sauter, as he was released not only for 1986, but uh, for a few years after that. But the flyer is nothing special. It, it does have uh, offers for some uh, surplus vehicles, but that's just about it. Uh, of course, uh, Sergeant Slaughter is best known for this outfit in the car cartoons and the comic books. And he comes with a bit baton, which is, um, well, exactly the same one that the first person comes with. Now, Sergeant Slaughter is a very, very tall figure. As a matter of fact, he is four inches tall, not three and three quarter inch. Uh, he I practically tops the uh, four inch scale because of his campaign hat. But as you can see, even with Gung Ho, which is kind of a big figure himself, he still towers over him. That's the, uh, that's the length of his body mold, actually. It's rather a bit longer. While I'm not a wrestling fan at all, I really have always loved this version of Sergeant Slaughter. In fact, while most uh, lists consider him to be a 1985 character, I've always considered him to be a 1986 because that's when the actual figure was released. However, back when I was still collecting only up until 1985 G.I. Joes, I've loved them so much that I've always snuck him in under that technicality. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.